everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I make mistakes all the time. In my videos it's not uncommon that there'll be like an oh no or an oops or sometimes things work that wasn't how I expected it. And I really enjoy showing these mistakes in my videos because I think it helps everyone learn. However, back in the summer of 2019, when I was filming videos for my Dive Into Dying collaboration with Midcrate, there were some tutorials I was filming where something slightly unexpected happened and therefore I decided to refilm either with slightly different colors or maybe a slightly different technique to have a better example of what I was trying to demonstrate. And so the video that I'm going to share today is one of those examples. Before I talk more about the project, I just want to say that this video is not sponsored by Nitcrate or Dyer Supplier. I am an affiliate marketer with both companies and I have my links down in the video description. All of the Dive Into Dyeing videos are available for free on the Dyer Supplier YouTube channel and I've included them in a playlist on my channel as well to make it easier to find those videos because I am very, very proud of how they turned out. For a cake dyeing video, I started with 100 grams of Dyer Supplier's Superwash Merino Worsted Weight Yarn. And using my ball winder, I caked it up into a yarn cake, nice and loose to allow dyes to penetrate more into the center. I should back up a moment. Why would you even want to dye a yarn cake? Well, it's a fast and dirty way to create a gradient. It will be a variegated gradient, not a perfect gradient, but because of the way the yarn is wound up, the dye will access the outside of the cake a lot better, giving you a really deep color there, and it'll take more time for dye to go all the way to the center, which will give you a more where you will get more pastels or if the cake is tight enough, maybe even some white left. And it's a lot of fun. I'll get to the reason why I decided to redo this project a little later on, but for now, let's go look at the dyes and the setup. In my dedicated dye pot, I have 20 cups of water and no acid yet. We added a half cup of dye, which is about 118 milliliters of our 1% stock solution. A 1% stock solution is one gram of dye dissolved in 100 milliliters. So we're using the equivalent of 1.2 grams of dye. The dye pot is cool, but I am just now going to turn on the heat. And there is currently no acid in here at all. This is because I want to slow down the rate of color absorption on our yarn cake. And now we are going to start submerging this dry yarn cake into our dye bath. And again, there is no acid in here yet. And we're also completely cool. I am just pressing the cake below the surface to help it get submerged. You could use a lower volume of water. I wanted to make sure there was enough so that way the yarn cake would be able to float and would not be sort of stuck um, on the bottom with some above the surface of the yarn. While I pressed the yarn cake beneath the surface, I did not squeeze it. And those bubbles we're seeing now are air bubbles coming out of our yarn cake, which you can just barely see beneath the surface. I am going to let things heat up for about 10 minutes, and then we'll come back and add some acid, whether or not we're about to hit a boil or not. Okay, you can see we're getting some movement on the surface as we're heating up, but now we're going to add some acid. I'm going to go ahead and add four tablespoons, which is about a quarter cup of vinegar. Um, and as time goes on, we will add more and more acid. But the less acid and adding the acid here slowly will allow some of this color to penetrate towards the center. Um, you could start off with a lot of acid. You would just get a more shallow layer of color around your yarn with more uh, pastel and white in the middle. So I'll be back in another 10 minutes. 10 minutes later, the heat got a little high, so I reduced it to low. And you can see that a lot of the color has cleared. And looking at oh, the outside of the yarn cake, oh dear, is that the outside or did the inside pop out? 
there's the oops. And I'll give more thoughts on what I think actually happened later on as we discover more about this project. But since I was commissioned to film a tutorial for another company, it was really important to have something that would be concise and easy to follow. Not that I'm known for my concise videos, but I worked hard to keep things very much to the point without a lot of my Rebecca-isms around it that I often have on hand. Okay, it looks like the inside popped out, which is a look. <laughs> this is not something I've had happen before, so we'll see what happens. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, all right, let's go ahead and add uh, some more acid. We are going to add another one, two, three, four tablespoons of white vinegar. And then, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and let this heat another, I think, 20 minutes. When I am filming, I frequently leave audio notes to myself telling me I'm going to refilm that or there's a voiceover or this should be a time lapse and things like that. Uh, the following clip is one that I left for myself that I'm going to intentionally leave in the video because I think you might enjoy hearing it. Rebecca, well, this needs to refilm, be refilmed, but save all this old stuff and use that for 10 minutes. 20 minutes are up. I'm going to turn off the heat, but I'm going to leave everything here in the pot to cool completely. I'm going to go ahead and add just a tiny other little splash of vinegar, maybe another one to two tablespoons. And yeah, we're going to let this cool slowly in the pot so we can try to absorb that residual color that is present. When cake dyeing, there is less surface area available for the color to strike the yarn, so it can take longer than what you might be used to if you have a, some yarn that has a lot less resist overall. The dye bath is cleared and we are going to carefully remove our yarn cake. Clearly this yarn cake was a bit too loose because the middle popped out. And now I don't want to end up with a tangled mess, but I do want to rinse it carefully. Um, we will wash it thoroughly once we are ready to, uh, after I've wound it onto some kind of nitty knotty or something, I'll wash it at that point because then all the fiber will be exposed. But for now, we are just checking to see maybe if there's any bleeding and it looks like we're good. And so now, ooh, I'm a little nervous about putting this through the spin dryer since it's come apart a little bit, but we're gonna go and try anyway and just like secure it really well. So I will let you know how that comes out. Out of the spin dryer, we are looking pretty good. Um, I don't think it got much more tangled than it was already, but I'm gonna go set this on top of a drying rack so that way it can dry for a couple days, which will make it a little easier to unravel without stretching the fibers. I don't think I've had the center pop out of a yarn cake like this before, so it might be a little tangly to wind onto my PVC pipe nitty knotty. but I think it could also be really cool because we have this more sort of smoky, purpley brown color in the middle, then we're definitely gonna have some more dark on either end. So yeah, I can't wait to see how this will turn out. I was wrong. That mess that came out was not from the center, but from the outside. And I am still detangling it. When I was filming this, I really, really thought that the middle had popped out because we had this little ball, extra ball of yarn there. But I now think that because it was a little bit vigorous, the cake was spinning around in the water and we actually unraveled part of the outside. So the final colorway is the type of colorway I might have expected from this technique. But the way we got there, again, is not the best example for someone trying it out. But I did want to share this eventually because mistakes and things that you can't explain do happen sometimes. And 
it's okay to lean in and just go for it and see where you end up. So try not to be too hard on yourself when something unexpected happens. Uh, you know, it's, it's not always fun when it happens, but sometimes all you can do is just laugh and move on. Ooh, look at this gradient. Um, the way I've it wound, it doesn't feel like as balanced, but there is a good amount of the dark color and it gets lighter and lighter. Um, as you go to the center of the cake, and I think it's just beautiful. The gradient is really pretty, and the super lightest section um, at the very outside is really subtle compared with the more medium, but with that, my eye, I do see a perceptible difference. And you gotta love all that great reverse speckling going on. I absolutely love how these colors turned out. Um, it's a rich reddish, sort of grape-like color, and the reverse speckles throughout are just stunning. I am really excited to play around with this more on Superwash yarns in the future. I am actually really impressed how far the color penetrated into this yarn cake. Superwash yarn in general absorbs dye a lot faster than non-superwash yarn, so most of the cake dyeing projects I do are with non-superwash yarn. So that way you get more penetration of color and it doesn't all just strike to the very outside. Something that perplexed me when I first started this technique many years ago. So starting with no acid and especially with a dry yarn cake can allow your yarn to suck up some of that dye right away before the yarn can really start absorbing it and sort of filtering the dye out of the liquid that is going towards the center of the cake. I think that this colorway turned out really, really awesome. And I do like the other colorway that I ended up creating for the video that's on the Dyer Supplier YouTube channel. As of today, December 9th, 2021, Dive Into Dyeing is in stock on the Knit Crate website. And they haven't told me otherwise, but I used to have a coupon code chemnitz20, which would give you 20% off your first month. But you can also go and check out all of the videos on the Dyer Supplier YouTube channel. The videos are all available for free. That is something that was really, really important to me when I was doing this project. Of course, I have hundreds of videos here on the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel that you can also reference. So please make sure you are subscribed and give this video a thumbs up, especially if you want to see me re visit uh, the two other projects that I have not yet edited that were extra footage from when I was originally filming those dive into dying videos. I feel like I have referenced these videos and why I did things a different way a couple times in the past, especially the thought that Kelly Green and Chartreuse were very, very different, and it turned out they were pretty much the same color. That is one of the projects where the yarn is pretty, it just didn't work the way I thought that it might. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching.